over here. All right, hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show, and welcome to the uh, as we continue the second half of Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture interview series. And today, I got a, a guy who, uh, well, we we co- in this situation we combine movies and we combine art and we make a masterpiece. And this and that's what this guy kind of does in, in his work. His name is Jason Flowers, and he's a freelance uh, artist. And uh, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's kind of fun to to know that uh, you just uh, this is what you do, kind of in, in a way uh, to make a living. Yeah, um, I've been thinking, thankful to get the chance to do it for a little while now, and uh, it's it's definitely very hard work on on its own. It's um. I mean, it's, it's fun because it's like I'm getting to do what I've always loved and wanted to do, but I think a lot of people don't realize how much work actually has to go into doing it, you know? So, like, there's no days off for me. Every day is a working day, and if I'm not working, I'm losing money. So. Sure, sure. I mean, how, how many, how many uh, projects do you have to do in order to be financially okay? Um, it depends. Some, some, I'm, since, since I've gotten to, like, do it, um, it's all, like, a learning game. So, um, you know, some months are better than others, and you just learn, uh, what, just having to learn, like, what months work best for you, what months are your dead periods, and, um, just trying to save and plan around that. Okay. Um, Cool. And, uh, you just got done doing a, a convention here this, uh, past weekend and how was that experience for you i actually did i um i was at a uh, fandom fest in louisville kentucky and uh, i've never been to the show but um it was an interesting situation but uh it nonetheless a very successful one so i can't really complain too much but i mean they had tons of great guests and uh tons of people but i mean a little a little chaos <laughs> but overall, it was a good show for me, at least. I, I heard that some people weren't as lucky, as fortunate, but um, you know, it works it works different for each person. So. I suppose, yeah, and, and and you know, it's just kind of nice to uh, to be able to go to a convention and see all types of different people uh, that are doing uh, similar things that you're doing, or or who are actors or or singers, or you know, it's just. Uh, I wish they had that around here. See, I live in northern Minnesota. Of course, I'm going to be moving to South Dakota here uh, this week as well. So uh, I don't know if they do anything in South Dakota but for conventions, but I know uh, in northern Minnesota we don't do uh, we do not do uh, movie conventions. We do tractor conventions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, is, it is really cool. It's one of the few mediums that I know of where you actually get to do your, you know, your work. <laughs> And then you can share that with someone by, like, going to a convention and seeing their reactions and, and meeting the people that, like, follow you, say they follow you online or they love your work and stuff like that. It's it's very rewarding at the same time to hear that because when you're I'm, – I'm usually at home, like, 90% of the time. And uh, when you're, you're kind of strapped to a desk working on stuff, you kind of have that – mindset sometimes where you're like what am I doing is this going anywhere does anyone even care that I'm creating this drawing or yeah. working on this comic book and uh, it, it's it's really it's much relief and rewarding to know when you when you talk to people and they love your work or they get excited about something you've drawn oh so, yeah uh, yeah that's kind of similar to what uh, I remember when I had the chance to do an interview with uh, Alex Vincent who uh who played Andy in the Child's Play 1 and 2, and he said it's kind of the same thing in a way, you know, just the fact that he's an actor, uh, the fact that uh, people remember who he is, you know, what character he played uh, uh, when he goes to the conventions, but then uh, when he gets to the real world, nobody knows who he is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, that was like years and years ago, too, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, it's one, and that's the thing, too, especially with any type of, like, artistic medium or, like, visual entertainment, where it's, like, whether you're an, a musician or an artist or an actor, if you're not working or if you're not in the limelight or showing, you know, putting yourself out there, showing people you're you're still around, it could be, like, a month. It could be two months or a year forgotten. Yeah, 
Yeah. You know, it takes a lot to come back. So, you know, it's like I, I do that with musicians where, like, you, you, they put out a great album they have it for a little while and then you don't hear from them because they've taken, like, a, you know, two years before they work on the next album. And you're, and when they finally come back, you're like, man, it's been years since they But really, it hasn't been that long. It's just been a short break and you're not used to that them all in your face the entire time with their music on the radio and the videos and oh, sure. hearing about their concert in town so it's definitely that's another part of the the issue of doing it by yourself and doing time and having to constantly keep people up aware with what you're doing so a lot of like art prints to kind of compensate time to kind of keep people like seeing my stuff my stuff and myself while I get to work on the comic books Oh sure. So so let's let's let the audience get to know you a little personally there, Jason. Like uh, like how did it all start for you? And what, uh, when you were a kid, and uh, where did the whole love for art kind of begin? You know, um, well, I, I started. I, I've always drawn since I was a little boy. I'm I'm 31 right now. Okay. And uh, I I've been drawn since I was a little little boy, and uh, I was a product of of going to daycare. And I was 12, so <laughs> I was stuck in daycare for um, most of my days after school and dinner, so I just, I always just drew and drew and drew and drew, and one, one kid, probably when I was like six or seven, he came and he brought this giant pack of comic books, and it was the most amazing I'd ever seen. Like, it was like some early Wolverine comics and early oh. X-Men comics by like people by um, like the name Jim Lee and Mark Vestry and it was just the best art I had ever seen and at that point on I knew I just I needed to draw comics for the rest of my life oh, wow. oh so right. I uh, cool. just made my own comics and just drew and drew and drew and around 14 and 15 I started like printing them up and uh, there was like local shows around town that had like little like one day like toy shows and stuff uh-huh. and we'd, like toy and comic shows so we'd, we'd buy a table like 30 bucks and set up and just sell cool. sell our comic books and uh, it's just kind of grown from there and I eventually got into to the big shows like uh, like there's a big show in town called Dragon Con uh-huh. and it has like 50, 60,000 people that show up to, at that show every year and uh, so I'm I'm part of that now oh wow. okay uh-huh. oh I'm sorry say no go, no, no, go ahead that's pretty oh. impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, so I, I get to be one of the artists there, and uh, I, I just, I also do touring, so I go around and do conventions around, around pretty much the eastern United States. I haven't really traveled too far west yet, but um, yet is the keyword. <laughs> but it, it's kind of, I tell people it's kind of like being a musician. Like musicians, they like. They make their money off of CDs and making music, uh-huh. but they re- they make their real money touring and you know getting to meet the people and the fans and selling merchandise like that. And that's kind of how it is for me. Like I make I make my money like making comic making the comic books I I create, but at the same time I also make most of my money going to convention and setting up and selling stuff that way. But um, yeah, I. I got to, um, I think my first graphic novel was published with Art Comics, and it was called Ripped, and uh, it's like a time-traveling novel. It came out about three years ago, okay. and uh, it got optioned for a movie. I haven't heard anything else from it. They, I just know that the stu- some studio purchased the rights to it for, for an option for a movie, but you know, things like that go. I mean, oh. They buy a lot of movie properties, like comic properties up since comic books are so popular in the film industry. But um, I got into the sketch card business for a little while, and I've done sketch cards for Night of the Living Dead and Dead World and Prella uh-huh. um, TV series. Yeah, yeah, and, I was uh, going to ask about I'm that. Yeah. I'm working on the uh, Mars Attack. Okay. New series coming up too. I'm not sure yet. We're still still talking to some of the editors, and they're supposed to get back to me in a couple of weeks. But. Wow! So it sounds like you've had a pretty good career. You and at a young age of 31. So you're only see. I'm I'm, I'm almost 30. I'm going to be 30 in another month and a half. And uh, 
So it's kind of nice to, to, to talk to people my age or, or around there that are actually doing things that aren't just a typical, oh, let's be a teacher when we grow up, let's be a doctor when we grow up, let's do this, let's do that, and, you know, all those all those uh, typical things that everybody likes to say uh, what they want to be when they grow up, or at least you know, at least you kind of knew before you kind of grew up kind of what you wanted to be. Yeah, I, I, I definitely feel lucky in that. In that sense, my, my wife tells me all the time that um, how 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 you know in a way she's a little bitter towards me because you know I already knew what I wanted the second I it happened when I was younger. Like I knew I wanted to be a comic artist and never had to like struggle with that decision of life. Like, what am I going to do with myself? So yeah. I just I actually had the opportunity recently to. Um, to, to do it and it was like a sink or swim kind of thing and I'm so far knock on wood why well, I'm just I'm, yeah I'm just very impressed by you know, I'm looking at your website right now uh, jasonflowersart.blogspot.com in case if anybody wants to check it out uh, I, I love your banner your banner alone you. really explains I mean you know you would have to look at the website right away you take a look at you know take a gander at the banner and it really tells your story kind of in, in a way where you see all these cool pictures that you all drew and they're all of movies that people can relate to but a lot of my my personal favorites like the Robocop and Terminator gremlins everybody loves gremlins and who doesn't like Ninja Turtles and Batman and Joker right. and all that stuff I mean uh, and I just recently just looked at your print here, your, your latest one, the Beetlejuice one. That looks uh, very amazing. Uh, how how long did that take to to do? Thank you. Um, well, that one definitely. Um, it only took about about eight hours from start to finish. But yeah, I stayed up stayed up all night. I had a. It was right before I went to do that Fandom Fest show yep. this past week, and I had. Um, had been wanting to do a Beetlejuice poster for a while because we just moved into a new apartment and uh, I was going through some stuff and came across my... I had a Beetlejuice poster, like giant, like, movie-style poster. I didn't even know I had, so I was like, I have to put this up. So we put it up, and then suddenly Beetlejuice came on TV and uh, it was just, like, one of those things where it was like... I felt like, you know, my spirit guide's telling me, hey, do it. Do something. <laughs> so I... Uh, I was like, I've been wanting to do it for a while anyway, so yeah, sure. I did, and people have, yeah, that's probably one of my biggest, biggest uh, talks right now. Oh, yeah. On because, my website, so. Because it just, uh, it's just nice and detailed, and, and the color looks good, and, and, it's, and it's taken from one of the classic scenes from the movie, you know, at kind of the, almost to the near end of it. And, and I don't know, I don't know if you realize, uh, I'm pretty sure you did if you're a big Beetlejuice fan, that uh, even though the movie was called Beetlejuice, the focus on Beetlejuice was not that, uh, he was not in there, or Michael Keaton was not in there that, that long. I think uh, somebody yeah, said he, seven he and a half said, minutes. Um, he only talked. <laughs> like a couple of like they, they <laughs> I think I read somewhere where they added it all up he, he's only got like 15 or 20 minutes screen time everything else is, yeah you know about the other characters I think somebody so, but it's just awesome that it, yeah. like he steals the show that well you know I think somebody said it was like seven and a half minutes total mm -hmm. and I was just like yeah. wow it's supposed to be called Beetlejuice but yet he's only in there I think he said it I think it said it only took him two weeks to do everything in, in Beetlejuice yeah. so yeah, but yet it's still one of the most iconic uh, movie characters uh, in our childhood, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm big on like making movie posters, and but when I do try, I try to always do like an iconic scene from a film, like the Gremlins Two is the Rambo, yeah, you know, fighting you know the spider gremlin and stuff like that. So like the Alien vs Predator is the scene where he gets stabbed in the chest. And, so I kind of veer off a little bit with the co with the horror. With, I mean, with the comic book. Yeah. On um, like just ideas that I think would be cool, but. Um, so I'm guessing you're you're pretty much a fan of like '80s and '90s uh, uh, film or like the film series big, and stuff like that. Yeah, big fan of like '80s and '90s films because obviously you know like since you said you're 30, you're about to be 30. Yep. Yep. Just yeah, about. Yeah. So we all we both grew up in that time period. So, um, but you know, I. <laughs> 
I've always wanted to make the prints that I felt like I loved growing up, and so far, um, it, everyone seems to be feeling the same. So I've got like Power Rangers and Gremlins. I'm a huge Ninja Turtle fan, yeah. and the goal one day is to, fin- to finally get to work on the series. That's the goal. Oh, sure, sure. So, yeah, uh, um, has any has there ever ever been any big time celebrity that has worked on any of these films that you've uh, illustrated that has seen your work at all that you know of? Um, I mean, I've met quite a few. I we actually, my wife and I just did a show in April called C Two E Two in Chicago. Okay, and uh, I I was in line for Starbucks and ended up talking to one of the staff members who was helping out with the celebrities and they had this like running joke because um jason david frank who's the green ranger yeah he he was actually at the show and uh they had like a joke going on um she was helping ron perlman uh-huh i don't know if you're familiar yep, with ron yep, perlman yep. Yes, and um him and another celebrity they were just kind of like talking about it, what kind of power ranger costume they would want so she was trying to find an artist in the artist alley to draw that for them so I she you know commissioned me to do it and I got I got to go meet them and get my picture taken with them and they loved the drawings and oh, wow. was, so that was pretty cool getting to meet like Ron Perlman but I've also met Jason David Frank and he was very nice and he loved the Power Ranger prints that I did and yeah. so um, I got I got to meet I met yeah, Kevin Eastman from, oh. who's the creator of the Ninja Turtles and sure I got to sit next to him last year at Dragon Con, so that was that was a huge like <laughs> did you show thing because he's like he's one of my biggest inspirations. Did you show? Wise, did you show him your your pictures that you drew? Of yeah, he, he definitely <laughs> he definitely liked them a lot, and um, I actually know a couple people who are some friends with some of the editors at IDW where the new shows are being published right now. So I'm kind of trying to get some samples together and How- knock on wood. So, so is he still in charge? So he's so he owns the rights to all everything Ninja Turtle, pretty much, since he's the guy who created the. No, idea. no. Um, he he and the co him and him and this other guy named Peter Laird they created it, but uh, he sold his rights off to Peter Laird like years ago, probably oh. in the early two thousands. Okay, and then Peter just recently sh- sold the whole se- the whole license off to Viacom. Okay. Who also, you know, so Nickelodeon is owned by Viacom, so that's why the new Ninja Turtle com, um, the new Ninja Turtle uh, TV shows out. Yeah. But IDW Comics licensed the Ninja Turtles from Viacom, so that way they have the rights to print it. And they brought in Kevin Eastman, and Kevin Eastman came back, and he's been like help him oversee and do a lot of like the covers and interior art and layouts and stuff sure. for the book so he's been working on it again he's been having a blast so. oh that's cool yeah I've always been a big fan of Ninja Turtles too I grew you know like uh, uh, the Saturday morning cartoons on CBS I'm sure you remember very well uh, the original oh, yeah. the original Ninja Turtle cartoon and then of course I was a fan you know when the movies came out in the 90s and stuff I don't. I didn't really care so much for part three because I didn't understand part three at the time. But now, since I've been yeah. to, now that I've been to Astoria, Oregon, and everything, when I've traveled traveled over there to see the Goonie House and and uh, knew that Turtle Sea was filmed there, I kind of appreciate it a little bit more. But I was more of a fan of of the first one, actually, the very first movie because I. You know, I, the first one was really good because it it actually almost stayed true to how their original comic books were. Yes, yes. You know, they they added a little bit of, like, you know, more comedy and humor to, you know, lighten it up with the children aspect. But, I mean, if, I think it was a PG-13 film. Yeah. I can't... I'm pretty sure. I mean, maybe it was a hard PG, but, I mean, I think it was a PG-13. And I think and I think a lot of people enjoyed that too because uh, I enjoyed a lot of it because of the music. You know, I, I own the soundtrack right. to it, and the soundtrack kicks ass, and then it always will. You know, so <laughs> part part two was okay too, the secret of the ooze. But for me, it, it, it all was about the first one. Normally, I'm not about the first one when it comes to certain movies. I normally like the second ones better, but. The Turtles number one did it for me as far as uh, yes. maybe a bigger fan. <laughs> yeah, Turtles two is is good in its own right, but um, 
the first one will always be my favorite. I'm, I'm excited to see what they make with the new one. Yeah. That Michael Bay is making, so... A lot of people are, like, unhappy about it, but I don't care. I mean, yeah. I'm happy they're making a Pe- new Turtle movie. So. People like to give Michael Bay a, uh, you know, a bad time, but, you know, it's like, hey, you know... I saw the Transformers movies that he did, you know, and I thought he did pretty good. I mean, I don't know what what more people want, you know, to be happy. It's just like uh, at least there is a movie that uh, based on Transformers. He could right, said right. he could just. I actually thought the third one was really good. I yeah. liked it better than the second one. But yeah, it's just a little darker, <laughs> yeah, like a darker feel to it. But, but like, my my art kind of veers over to that kind of sure, dark side. Sure, yeah. sure. Were, uh, and then I noticed too that you did some stuff with Batman and all that. Uh, were you a big fan of? Uh, what were you more of a fan of? Uh, the Michael Keaton Batman series, or, or or the series that just came out not too long ago with the Dark Knight and everything? I probably have to go with uh, the newer series. I'm a big Christian Bell fan. I followed him when he was in like American Psycho and other films like that. So okay. when I found out he was going to be Batman, that made me made me really happy to to know and. So I'm, I'm more of a fan of those, but I mean, Michael Keaton in the first Batman film was fantastic, and so was Jack Nicholson. Sure, and the reason why I bring that up is just because uh, you know, back in the '90s, they uh, like okay, Michael Keaton did two Batman movies, and then then they went to Val Kilmer, and then George Clooney, and then I think I Dennis. Think, I think Kilmer did a good job too. <laughs> um, I love George Clooney, but um, that was just a terrible. Movie. <laughs> Like, I understood what they were doing. They're making it more like the old pop kind of style. Yeah. But still, it was just, it was a little bit. But what, I, uh, what <laughs> I didn't understand is why they didn't, like, just stick with Michael Keaton the whole time, you know. Just, that would have made more sense to me, you know. If he was yeah. going to be the Batman, why have Val Kilmer, who just was uh, Jim Morrison of the Doors, <laughs> play Bruce Wayne all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah. I heard that Burton was on to, like, help produce, but him and Schumacher just didn't get along, so he kind of left the project. So. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I, I have the Batman Blu-ray, and to me, that will always be my favorite Batman of, of all the whole series, because to yeah, me... That was, a, that was a good one. Yeah, it, it, really it, was, it was a fun movie, and a little dark, too, I mean, but it's it just mostly based on just uh, the fact that I'm a big fan of Michael Keaton, and I, and I think he did a good job, even though he's not like you know, what when they when they come up for Bruce Wayne, they come up with a guy that's more muscular and more you know like he actually looks like he can kick some ass or whatever. But with Michael Keaton, they like he's so short and everything. He's like and, you know he's like only five foot something, and yet uh, they, a lot of people didn't like that they used Michael Keaton as uh, the the first Batman. But it worked out anyway, and it made it a blockbuster and made it a sequel, and then you know it kind of just kept going. But let's uh, let's talk more about you here because I feel like we're getting off subject here. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I just got a couple I talk more movies all day. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, that's just that's what happens. It seems like we go into a tangent and then we just kind of. Uh, but I got just a couple more questions to ask you, then I'll let you go. Uh, uh, any other uh, conventions uh, going on that you're going to be going to at all? Um. Like I said, I've got uh, Dragon Con coming up this Labor Day weekend in Atlanta. So that's going to be the next huge one for me. And then um, I have another, like, five or six after that before I call it quits for the year. Usually uh, December and January are kind of like I call it the dead zone. Sure. Because that's when, you know, people are ready for the holidays and they're trying to, like, you know, buy Christmas presents and stuff like that. They're not really looking to go to comic conventions and stuff. So there's never really that many people. And then in January, you know, people are trying to, like, recover from the holidays. So. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, if you ever, you know, were looking for a place to, and, and, and it's not just a place for a convention or whatever, but if you were looking for a place where you wanted to sell some of your art, uh, it doesn't matter what time of the year you want to do it, I don't know if you ever been to this place before. I just recently just got, came back from this place, uh, the Mall of America in uh, Minneapolis. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of it before. Everybody's heard of the Mall right. of America. It's it's a very big mall, and I think uh, if you did like a, a table meet and greet or something like that, or, or something where you could sell your art, I think you would. Uh, I think you'd have some success because there's a lot of people that are interested in that sort of thing, and uh, they get a uh, lot of lot of uh, shoppers. Uh, at the Mall of America every day. Yeah, yeah. And I think that'd be a good idea. Place. Yeah, shopping malls are 
Yeah. Crazy, especially it's, that one. Yeah, because I mean, you don't just have to do. I mean, I know the conventions are the ones where you get to meet the fans and everything, but but if you ever try like a shopping mall thing, you know, where it's a big mall where you know, you know, people even if they're not familiar with your work at all, or, or even know who you are, at least you can introduce yourself to a new uh, to a, a different area like Minnesota, and uh, that I don't think gets enough. Uh, uh, to, I mean, even though Minnesota is known for a lot of different uh, pop culture. Things, but uh, movie wise, I think, uh, and film and art wise, I think, uh, I think uh, it needs uh, an upgrade. So I think you'd be perfect just to do something like that. If that was uh, something you were, you know, were able to do. <laughs> anyway, uh, just one uh, last question, and I kind of like to ask uh, once in a while, depending on who I have on, uh, I like to ask this question. I guess it's a question and then followed by a statement, I guess. Uh, since you're an artist and, and that's pretty much what you chose for a career, if anybody else was wanting to do something like what you're doing right now uh, or, or very similar to it, uh, what advice would you give to that person? Uh, well, usually what I tell people is like, um, just to, you know, it's, it's like everything. It's, you know, the, the, the more you practice, the better you'll get. And uh, this definitely wasn't something that happened overnight like I I've been doing like I had a day job for like 10 years in retail and I just uh, I would do this I would do conventions every you know every chance I got so I, you know me taking time off from work wasn't for a vacation it was to go work at a convention yeah. and set up so I tell people it's, it's not something that think, like that unfortunately happened overnight I wish it did but I, I worked hard for it and I I just, um, I pushed every day to draw, and, you know, I, I would come home, even when I was tired, and I would, you know, from working all day, I would come home and I'd draw and work on art, and then I would um, get up and go to work the next day and do it again. So it wasn't some. it's something that, like, you have to practice at, and you have to, like, push yourself, and even being able to do it full-time now, it's, um, it's something like, like I said, I can't slack on. Like every day is, you know, working on art or answering emails and trying to get more, more, more freelance work and trying to do other things and prepping for the next show. And so it's never ending. But um, it's it's just all about like making sure it's what you want and you just going for it uh -huh. and, and being the best you can at it. I mean doing shows and stuff you, you learn like what what works what sells and what doesn't and I think I think in a way maybe me doing retail for so long it kind of helped prep me sure. for how to display things and how to like talk to people and learning like what works and what doesn't work so I'm kind of thankful in that field even though it took a decade to do it <laughs> but um yeah, I think I think for I think there was just uh, certain times, certain things that kind of built on to other things that helped push me to the point where I was able to go. You know what? You have this chance. You have this opportunity. Go for it. And uh, it's one of those things where if you don't if you don't go for your dreams, you know, never know. You know, I'd rather go for it and learn whether or not I'm going to succeed or fail than sitting here going well yeah maybe one day maybe one day and then eventually that just stayed away to uh -huh. having having a job I don't care too much for so well, well it looks like you're able to make a make a good living doing this and uh, it's a lot of work but uh, you're, you you sound like you're very dedicated and that's what uh, I'm sure that's what gives you the inspiration just to stay dedicated and realize that there, it could be worse. I mean, you could be working for a boss, you know. And I, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I'm thankful. I, I, I take my daughter to school, and, and then I, I pick her up, and, you know, in between that period, I'm, I'm doing my work at home. So I get, not only do I get the honor of, like, doing the job I love and want to do, but um, I get to be at home with my daughter and take care of her instead of dealing with what I grew up with, yeah. being in a daycare. Sure. waiting until my parents had to get off work, you know, and then could come pick me up. So it's it's one of those, that's one of the major drives, too, is um, getting 
getting to know that it could be worse and that I could have to go out and find some place and have a job and have have a different type of job and yeah. have a boss who might be mean to me, you know, like sure. if if anyone's mean to me here it's myself for not <laughs> doing what I'm supposed to do or something. <laughs> you know? No, that's, uh, but, that's totally understandable. All right, well I tell you what, Jason. Uh, it's been an honor uh, to talk to you, and I wish you nothing but success no, in the thank future. Thank you so much. Hey, no problem. Uh, 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 this is uh, kind of neat because uh, I don't get many artists, uh, like actual painters or or people that actually uh, draw on my show. So this is kind of rare. So I appreciate that. Right on. I appreciate the interview, sir. All right. Well, you have a good one, and we'll, we'll talk to you later then. All right. Thank All right, you. Bye. You too. Bye bye. And there we go. <laughs> All right. And that was Jason Flowers, who you just got done here in the interview with him, freelance artist. Uh, I'll put his website down below, like I always do for people that have websites. And I uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, this is uh, kind of a good way to kick off. Uh, well, we technically already have already kicked off uh, uh, the, the second half of the... <laughs> Uh, second half of the Frankie's Summers, uh, my interview series, uh, Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture, uh, what we had on uh, Mike Randall yesterday, uh, with his, uh, we're talking to him about uh, the interview or the interview that we did with him, uh, based on uh, his what he does for a living, or what he does, you know, to provide with good music and that from the old or from the fifties and sixties, and the fact that he loves Buddy Holly and all that stuff. Well, today we got to, to talk to Jason Flowers, and uh, while the name might not be too familiar with you, but it's still kind of fun to say that we got to do it anyway. And uh, check out his website, and uh, uh, we will definitely talk to you guys uh, later. And tomorrow, uh, stay tuned tomorrow, because we have uh, another great guest uh, for the show, uh, which will be my 40th guest for 2013. Uh, this one was guest number 39. Uh, guest number 40 is pretty big uh, he, he had uh, he's an author and he's still an author to this day he uh, wrote uh, one of his popular books they wrote was the novel to Halloween 4 which was uh, the movie Halloween 4 but uh, he didn't write the script for the movie but he, but he wrote the book about it and uh, his name is Nicholas Grabowski and uh, we'll be talking to him tomorrow right here on the Frankie Slauson show and uh, Frankie's icons of pop culture so We'll see what he's up to, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.